The 23 on the front of the gate says it all. This is Michael Jordan's house. But that's about to change. On November 22nd, this legendary property, designed, built, and lived in by Michael Jordan for 19 years, will sell to the highest bidder. And we're giving you a chance to see it like never before. Time to see Behind the 23. In the next few minutes, an all-access pass to Michael Jordan's ultra-private compound. He was demanding that if you were going to come to the breakfast club, you were going to work. A former teammate reveals why Jordan's home was key to the Bulls' six titles. And the ultimate home court advantage. We're on the hardwood of Jordan's personal basketball complex, plus an island escape. you never seen a pool quite like this. With a home this big, where do you start? Let's go one-on-one -on -one with Michael's listing agent, Catherine Malkin, and get the flow of the home. It sort of lays out so that you have living space here, office space over there, dining and kitchen. We had to stop in the dining room and show you a table that simply puts this room on the map. The table was actually made for him, and it's called the Baghdad table, so it is actually set up like the city of Baghdad, like a map grid. And all the furnishings stay with the home. They all stay. And every room perfectly captures the light, whether it's the floor-to-ceiling formal living room, the great room, a relaxing private corner, or the eye to the sky above the kitchen table. The kitchen, which was redone more recently, is really set up so that a chef can cook here, a family can cook here. Wonderful refrigerator, freezer, wine storage space, but also every appliance you could possibly want is here. Off the kitchen, step down into the great room lined with aquariums and this oversized sectional. As you'll see, this is one of several hangouts around the home that Michael designed for family and friends. When Jordan first built this home and moved in in 1994, this was an indoor swimming pool. Now look at this space, 110 inch screen, great lounging area. You've got the bar over here, and then the walls on both sides of this room completely disappear with ease. It's the ultimate in indoor outdoor living. In fact, this sprawling patio can be accessed from six different areas of the home. At the center of it all, paradise. A one of a kind infinity edge pool. Smack in the middle, your personal island oasis. From a design perspective, this entire section of the home plays off the views and access of the pool and patio, including the three-bedroom guest wing. Well, the guest house has its own entrance, but it's also connected to the house. I was worried that maybe somebody would come and stay and never leave. <laughs> it's so nice. And the guest house leads you to the most talked about spot in the home. Uh, there's definitely a different feeling when you come into this part of the house. I mean, can you imagine who probably sat around in these chairs? Why? Uh, look over my shoulder. That's Michael Jordan's private regulation size NBA quality basketball court. <laughs> now this is what I'm talking about. I mean, listen to that sound. And that shot, you know what I'm talking about. Game six, Utah Jazz over Brian Russell. I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance Jordan had already rehearsed for that exact moment right here. But title clinching shots come with a price. And nobody would think that the greatest player to ever play the game will put in that much work before he gets on the court. It, it was amazing to watch, it was amazing to witness. Randy Brown is talking about the Breakfast Club. The current assistant general manager of the Chicago Bulls won three titles with Jordan and was part of a group of players who would regularly train at Jordan's home. It really started off with Michael. Um, he and Tim Grover, and they kind of spilled over to Scotty, Ron Harper, and then myself. They would hit Michael's weight room down on the lower level of the house in the mornings before practicing with the rest of the team. They were intense. But where did the name Breakfast Club really come from? The chef was there. You know, it was easy for you know us to go work out and then have to have um, breakfast with his chef. 
but things have changed since the days of the Breakfast Club. The home has seen an extensive renovation, including much of the lower level. We did the wine cellar area that's behind it, but this used to be the exercise room. Now it became a card room, a cigar room, just sort of a boys room. And you would expect if this is a cigar room and there's the humidor right over here that you would smell yeah. smoke or something that hints this is a cigar room. Nothing. So there's a system that takes out all of the air that's not pure. It just smells good. Every part of the house all filtered out. We told you there were some amazing hangout spots in the house and we're not done yet. Let's go upstairs to a place that very few have seen. When Jordan wasn't winning championships with the Bulls, he was relaxing around his property. This was one of his favorite spots. This is actually the upstairs library, a room that he built when they remodeled the home in 2009. You've got your drop down screen and take a look at this space over here. In the adjacent room, there's the pool table and the doors to this wing, not just any doors, but these are the doors that welcome guests to the original Playboy Mansion in Chicago up until 1974. Wow. You really can't do better than this. That's the great thing about the whole property is that when you're outside, you're in an area that's completely away and on its own. And you're close to Chicago, so you'll have all of the things that you would want to do maybe in a big city. So we've shown you the 56,000 square foot home. Amazing. But this is a seven plus acre property. Michael brought in over 150 trees to line the property, creating ultra seclusion, ultra privacy. Then you have a pond fully stocked, a tennis court, it almost feels like you're on your own private golf course. After all, there is a PGA great putting green right outside your door. And where else in the world will you find Jumpman flags? Pretty cool. The home, the seven plus acres, the legendary history, indeed an all-star lineup. I'm here with Nick Leonard. He's with Concierge Auctions and is actually the project manager here at the Jordan House. This originally listed at $29 million. You're telling me this will go to the highest bidder? Yeah, the property is going to sell to the high bidder on November 22nd. We and, can't wait. And a lot of people may be surprised that Jordan is auctioning his house. We do this all the time. And, you know, fame withheld, Michael Jordan has a lot of similarities to kind of our typical seller. He's an extremely savvy, very successful business person. He has a spectacular property, one of a kind, and he's not using it. So he's taking control of the market, he's setting a sale date, and he's going to auction to the high bidder. Uh, for anybody with any interest, it's now or never. If you'd like more information, just go to concierge.auctions.com or call the number on your screen. Okay, I've got an official Chicago Bulls basketball right here. I'm going to put the pressure on Nick and ask him to sink an NBA 3 on Michael Jordan's home court. You think he can do it? Absolutely. All right. I think he got it! Yeah! <laughs> Apparently, greatness rubs off. Don't forget, a new owner come November 22nd, the highest bidder.